I come, madam, to take my leave. Nor did I, till this moment, know the pain I feel in the separation. I believe, sir, these sufferings cannot be very great, which you can so easily remove. But why need you go? A day or two longer perhaps might lessen your uneasiness. It must not be, madam. I have already trifled too long with my heart. If I stay a moment longer, I am undone. Then go, sir. I will urge nothing more to detain you. Goodbye and good fortune. By heavens, madam, fortune was ever my smallest consideration. Your beauty first caught my eye, for who can see that without emotion? But every minute that I converse with you steals in some new grace. What at first appeared rustic plainness now seems refined simplicity. What seemed forward assurance now strikes me as the courage of virtue and innocence. Oh, now I now resolve to stay. And I have too good an opinion of my father's discernment when he sees you to doubt his approbation. Oh, no, Mr. Marlowe. I will not, cannot allow you to, to stay under such circumstances. Do you think I could bear an arrangement which had any room for, for, for pain or discomfort? Do you think I could trifle with your happiness? Oh, by heavens, madam, I can have no happiness but what's in your power to grant me. I will stay. No, sir, I must in entreat your decision. Yes, madam, though every moment serves but to heighten my diffidence and confusion. Here, let me continue. Mm. Uh, uh. But, again. So, what have you to say now, young man? Nothing but that I'm all confusion. So you say and unsay things at pleasure. You woo a lady in private and deny it in public. You have one story for me and another for my daughter. Your daughter, sir? He, is this lady your daughter, sir? Yes, sir, my Kate, my only daughter. Whose else should she be? Oh, the devil. Is it true? Are you his daughter? Yes, sir. That very identical, tall, squinting lady. Oh, soon there's no bearing this. It's worse than death. <laughs> but now, sir, in which of your characters will you allow us to address you? As the faltering gentleman with looks upon the ground who stammers and hates hypocrisy. Oh, oh, oh. Or the loud, confident creature who keeps it up with Mrs. Mantrap and old Miss Biddy Buckskin till three in the morning. Oh, curses on my noisy head, I must be gone. <laughs> By the hand of my body, you shall not no, go, sir. I tell you, you shall not, sir. I know she'll forgive you. Won't you forgive him, Kate? We'll all forgive you. Come. Courage, man. So, so, they've gone off. Well, let them go. I care not. Who gone? My beautiful niece and her gentleman from town. He who came down with our modest visitor here. Well, my honest friend George Hastings, as worthy a fellow as ever lived, so the girl could not have made a more prudent choice. And by the hand of my body, I'm proud of the connection. Well, if he's taken away the girl, he has not taken away her fortune. That remains in this family to console us. Sure, Dorothy, you would not be so mercenary. No, that's my affair, not yours. But you know that if your son, when of age, refuses to marry his cousin, her whole fortune is left at her own disposal. Aye, but he's not of age. Oh. And she has not thought it proper to wait for his refusal. Oh, <laughs> oh. return so soon. Sir, for my late attempt to fly off with your niece, let my... Present confusion be my punishment. We are now come back to beg forgiveness. This is but the whining ending of a modern novel. Be it what it may, I'm glad they've come back. Forgiveness is the watchword of the night. Tony boy, come hither. Let me ask you a question. Do you refuse this lady's hand, which I now offer you? What signifies my refusing? You know, I can't refuse her until I'm of age. Uh, <clears throat> you have been of age these three months. Of age? I? Above three months. Then you shall see the first use I'll make of my liberty. Witness all men by these presents that I, Anthony Lumpkin Esquire, refuse you, Constantia Neville, <laughs> spinster, for my true and lawful wife. Whoops a daisy, marry whom you please, my dear. Constantia Neville can go to the devil, and Tony Lumpkin is his own man again. Oh, George! Joy, George, I give you joy with all my heart. I'd be the happiest man alive if you could return me forever. Oh, ever. come, madam. I know he likes you. I know you love him. You must and shall have him. And I say so, too. But I... Oh, dear Kate, will you be mine? Dear Charles, I will. Short and sweet. And we'll have a merry May wedding. What do you say to that? 
I say, um, um, uh, um, uh, uh, Amen. Well, that is the end of our play, Goldsmith's She Stoops to Conquer. It was written in 1773 and was adapted for omnibus by Maurice Valenci, who is the professor of comparative literature at Columbia. But as a working translator and playwright and adapter, he's the man who has been responsible for introducing to Broadway the works of Giraudoux. <laughs>